I'm sure we've all seen the breathtaking imagery from the Hubble Space Telescope of beautiful and multicoloured nebula. It almost seems as if a contemporary artist flicked different colours onto a canvas. But this isn't just a pretty picture. What you are seeing here are actual structures, tens to thousands of light years across. But how are these images so colourful? Does it really appear like that in real life? To answer this question, let's give you some context. Nebula may appear solid, or maybe even like clouds, but that is far from reality. Nebula are extremely diffuse gas clouds. On average, you may get about 10 to 100 particles per cubic centimetre. This is far less than any artificial vacuum produced on Earth. To give you a sense of how little that really is, a comparable cubic centimetre at sea level on Earth contains 10 quintillion particles. That's 10 to the power of 19 particles. On the other hand, if you were to have a nebula the size of Earth, it may only have a total mass of a few kilograms. Orion, perhaps the brightest nebula in our sky, is just about bright enough to be seen with the naked eye on a clear night. However, nebula can be a lot brighter too. If the Tarantula Nebula, found in the Large Magellanic Cloud, was as close to us as the Orion Nebula is, it would even be visible during the day. But if nebula are so sparse, how can we see them at all? It's important to remember the scales that are at play here. While nebula are sparse, they are also massive. H2 regions, which are a specific type of nebula, are known as stellar nurseries. These massive clouds can collapse and coalesce, and when they do, they form stars. A single nebula can contain enough mass to create hundreds to thousands of stars, and it is actually these newly formed stars that light up the gas in a nebula. Solar radiation shoots away from stars within a nebula, ionizing the nebula's particles, which releases this energy at a specific light wavelength. This means H2 regions are known as something called emission nebula, because ionized atoms within are emitting their own light. The process happening in an emission nebula is comparable to what happens in a neon light, where electricity ionizes neon within the bulb, causing it to light up. However, in a nebula, it's not neon that lights up. In fact, in the Hubble images, each color shows a different ionized atom. Unfortunately though, I can't tell you a blanket rule for colors in Hubble images. So while in this image of the Carina Nebula, reds correspond to sulfur atoms, greens to hydrogen, and blues to oxygen, in this image of the Swan Nebula, blues correspond to visible light blues greens to oxygen, and reds to infrared and hydrogen. That's because of the way Hubble takes its photos. Hubble is primarily a visible light telescope, but its optical range does also extend into the ultraviolet and infrared. When scientists look at a nebula, they often want to see what it is made of, so we'll photograph the object using specific filters. So, say they want to see hydrogen in a nebula. They will image the nebula using a filter that lets light being emitted along 658 nanometer wavelengths through, or in other words, the emission band of hydrogen. After that, they are left with a black and white image. Then they may decide to image the nebula again, this time looking for sulfur along 672 nanometer wavelengths. And then again, looking for oxygen along 501 nanometer wavelengths. Scientists then assign colors to each of these different photos and combine them together to produce the colors you see here. As you browse Hubble images on their website, you can see for yourself what the colors have been assigned to by looking to see what wavelengths of light were used. For Hubble images of nebula, they are pretty much always a false color. However, Hubble does also take natural color images too. The Sombrero Galaxy, for instance, had three different images taken in blue, red, and green, or RGB. So the colors you see here are how you would see this galaxy, were it bright enough for you to see it. So, if Hubble's images of nebula are false color, 
what would they really look like to us? Generally speaking, a lot more red. The European Southern Observatory also looks at a lot of the same objects Hubble does, although often using different colour filters. Going back to the Carina Nebula, on ESO's website, we see that the colour bands are RGB, or natural light, so we know that what we are seeing here is the Carina Nebula as we would see it. Here's ESO's version of Orion, except this time with ultraviolet and hydrogen overlaid on top of natural colours. So far we've only discussed the most famous nebula type, H2 regions or emission nebula. However, it is worth mentioning that there are a few other types of nebula too. You also have reflection nebula, where the energy from stars isn't enough to ionize the nebula, instead it reflects or scatters the starlight meaning these nebula tend to have similar frequency spectrums to nearby stars, often appearing slightly bluish. You also have dark nebula, or nebula with no stars around them to illuminate them. These almost appear pitch black. All in all, nebula are not as colourful as you may have initially thought, but to me that doesn't make them any less interesting. Looking through these filters means we can understand a lot more about nebula than we otherwise could have, and they do make for beautiful images. Thanks for watching! All the best and see you next time.